All right, welcome class to our week four lecture presentation. This week we're going to dive into the professional voice. So that's the plan and let's go ahead and get started. So the expectations for this week, um, be sure to read page 37 to 52 in the sequence for academic writing and that reviews more information about summarizing and integrating sources, also talks about avoiding plagiarism. Um, I'm going to start getting a little more strict about making sure that you include citations in your discussion board posts and because basically every essay assignment that we do in this class will include citation and include integrating sources. So it's going to be important to learn that material. Other things that you need to accomplish this week, re remember to respond to the week four discussion board questions. I do apologize for things getting going a little late this week. I know um, I usually have everything ready Monday morning. It's more like Monday night, but it's been a little crazy around here. Uh, Colorado right now is just getting hammered with blizzards and snowstorms, and um, it's been quite the eventful couple days. But um, the discussion board is now up and this presentation is ready, so I think that we should be getting going. Now we do have a quiz this week, and that's just going to be terms and ideas from the reading so far. Um, I would look for, you know, headers in the chapters, main ideas from the concepts that are in the in the book, and um, that quiz will be posted no later than Wednesday morning, but most likely it will be posted on Tuesday. So keep that uh, in mind. Also. We are working toward the essay 2 assignment, which is a professional proposal, and it's going to be due at the end of week 6. So um, just as a quick rundown of what that is, you can find an assignment description in the syllabus, and I will be posting a more in-depth assignment description as we get closer to the essay. But basically what you're going to do is you're taking your big idea, your idea for changing your current culture, your current world, and you're going to make some application. And how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we are going to write a letter, a business proposal to an actual company. So uh, depending on your idea for change, you're going to research a company or a business that would be willing to invest in your idea and make that change. So you're going to have to actually find a company, research that company, determine their mission statement, their purpose, their goals, and um, show how your idea can not only line up with their ideas, but it also can benefit them uh, moving forward in society or, or in their own business. So that's the idea behind the SA2 assignment. So it's now important to start determining what it is to have a professional voice. We've already looked at the informal voice. So you might recall the informal voice is from our last essay, which was uh, where you basically wrote a blog post about your idea for change and trying to get your friends and family to agree with you on that idea. We remember that informal writing reads like the way that you speak. And that means that it can include slang, it can include contractions and first person perspective, and it really relates to the audience in a, on a personal level. Now, and you were asked to also summarize another blog to incorporate into your essay one assignment. But the informal voice is really about what we do in an inf informal environment. And that is friendships, family, um, even acquaintances, our everyday life. And so the way we speak on an everyday level, I guess. So when we move into the professional voice, we need to know what that is and what is the difference. The professional voice refers to the style and tone that we utilize in a professional setting. Now I realize that many of you are high school students and some may not have even had a job yet. And I think that it's important to start to develop and understand what it is to be in the professional realm because ultimately that's where you're going to be headed. And so we're, you're going to move into the professional realm at some point if you're not there already. 
so we want to develop that professional voice and so what does that look like in comparison to an informal voice um daphne a jamison of cornell university described a principle of business and professional writing as a you attitude she says the expression of a relationship in which the writers or speakers in intentionally subordinate their priorities to those of the readers or listeners and now what does that mean okay so basically it's saying that the writer puts the needs of the audience above his or her own agenda and I like to think of this you-centered attitude almost like a we-centered attitude because when we work in a business world whether it is for the Dairy Queen down the street or it's for a high-tech company in Silicon Valley when we're working for a business the ultimate goal should be the betterment of the business and that includes the way in which we communicate the ideas that we present all of those things should be for the betterment of the employer the betterment of the company as a whole because ultimately in business and in the professional world if your company is doing better you will do better personally so if your company starts off as a little mom and pop shop and that serves burgers and they continue to do better and better that would mean they would expand and grow and you're working for them if they have go from one store to having three stores and you are an employee and then you've worked there for a long time and you have worked to better the company guess what you're going to be on the line for and for getting higher salaries for moving up in management and so if you are centered on focused on the betterment of the business it can benefit you as well now in the business world and in the professional world communication is meant to be productive so that idea of time is money however shallow that may sound it's really applicable in the professional world and the reason for that is that when you are in a job and you are sitting at your desk and you're doing something when you come across a piece of writing a letter a memo an email what you want to be able to do is take the information from that communication apply it to what you are doing and making sure that your time is effective and that you implement strategies to do better at your job so if you have to spend time reading you know flowery interesting descriptive language that doesn't get to the point then it can be a waste of time so the business world is going to be productive that's what communication is about so when we look at that we want to consider some questions so how can writing be beneficial to business and will this communication be worth the time when we look at what we are writing in a professional realm is it going to be beneficial and is it going to be worth the time of the audience so this might be a style that goes a little bit against your nature if you are used to you know traditional writing classes where you're writing sensory essays and self-expression and journals and poetry and short stories this is going to kind of grind a bit on what you envision as a writer because it is not flowery it should not be ultra descriptive and detailed and it's really meant to be specific it needs to be to the point and it needs to be pr productive so how do we reconcile the two because we've worked on you know in the past in comp one and probably in your other high school writing classes you've worked on developing this creative individualized voice and i'm all for creativity that is definitely up my alley but in the professional wor world creativity needs to come in a new way and how do we do that we express ourselves and utilize our voice with controlled passion i like to say controlled in that area because we don't want to go overboard 
but we want to be passionate about the things that we believe in, about the proposals that we make, about the job that we are doing. We want to generate interest in the re with the reader through that passionate language and make a connection to the benefit of the whole. So part of creativity is really about strategic and critical thinking skills. So if you can determine this is my purpose, this is my um, goal with what I'm communicating in the professional realm. Now, how can I present this in a way that everyone would want to get on board with it? How can I present this in a way that will show that my idea is going to be beneficial to the whole, to the whole group? So I think that you can use creativity. It's just going to have a different kind of look. So let's look at the difference between these two voices and how can we determine the difference. But both are going to have first person perspective. I think that's important to note that informal writing and professional writing will both include first person perspective. The difference would be that first person perspective and informal is often a very introspective, personal kind of voice when first person perspective in a professional realm is going to be more you centered. So let's look at just some different things. The vast Wyoming sky swelled all around me, the clear blue colliding with the rock formations and mountains as I loosely gripped the steering wheel. What Wyoming lacks in people between the tall Bighorn Mountains and Buffalo, of Buffalo and the smaller Casper Mountains, the state makes up for in space and time to think. It was in that wide space of a drive that I first contemplated the journey of my writing from a naive 18-year-old college freshman to a more seasoned, now 30-year-old university instructor and all the landmarks in between. So this is very much a sensory paragraph. And it's creative, it has descriptive details, and it's very personal. So it's talking about the narrator driving through Wyoming, it's talking about, um, you know, it mentions the clear blue colliding with rock formations. So we see these very descriptive details in an introspective piece about a writing journey. Okay, so let's look at a different kind of introspection. This university has shown itself as an exemplary academic institution, and I, I have been a part of the School of General Education and Legal Studies as a composition instructor. Even this week during the General Education Conference, I have been able to be inspired by our community of instructors. In the past, as an educator and learner, online environments have placed me on an island. As this week proves, the university encourages the building and support of a learning community. We strive to better ourselves as a university, and that motivates us as individuals to continue that trend. So here we have, obviously, a different tone. Okay, so this is uh, a professional paragraph. It's directed to members of a university. It talks about the writer's background. So it still it contains that element of introspection, but it's more about the university and how that introspection relates to the overall whole. And you can see that you centered writing. And, um, and as I mentioned, kind of looking at that in a we-centered way, you can even see this, that we strive to better ourselves, that it motivates us. And so it moves from an individual to a whole community. So it talks about community. It does have that first-person perspective in it, but it is more about how that experience of the first-person narrator contributes and communicates with the university as a whole. So we just see a different element of language. Now, is there descriptive detail in this? Yeah, to an extent. It definitely has interesting language. So an exemplary academic ex institution. We can be inspired by our community that online learning has placed me on an island. So there's descriptive details without being too overly sensory. It's more about passion and interest in those words rather than description and sensory. 
So let's look at an example of a proposal to a business and we're going to talk about it. So this says, uh, Dear Blank, thank you for your opportunity to consider for to be considered for support by the endowment fund with the ABC company. In the five short years since its founding, the XYZ After School program has played a major role in the transformation of Small Town USA from a town with too many unproductive, unsupervised kids with too much time to get into trouble to one providing these youth with a valuable structured program. The XYZ program uses the first service life skills curriculum to, quote, empower young people by providing local tennis facilities and schools with a life skills program that promotes positive values, healthy habits, and education through the game of tennis, resulting in real life power on and off the court. A priority need for the XYZ program, which operates summer and after school programs, is funding for our curriculum supplies and part-time program staff. In the past, we have relied on volunteering, volunteer or minimally compensated staff. This has resulted in high turnover, continued difficulty at, at attracting qualified personnel, and limited continuity for the participants whose, whose success depends on positive role models and the relationships they build with their instructors. The XYZ After School Program is requesting $10,000 from the endowment fund with ABC Company to support this program that makes a meaningful difference in the lives of our youth. A contribution to the, from the ABC Company will give us the jump start we need while we continue to implement our recently developed fundraising plan. We believe that the XYZ program is consistent with the mission and interest of, the, of ABC Company and hope that you will find it in your hearts and budget to support the program. If I can provide you with any additional information to encourage consideration of our request, please feel free to contact me at 417-555-5555. I will also be happy to personally meet with you, your committee, to present this proposal. Most sincerely, the name of the writer and their title. So in this letter, what we have is the basic format of a letter. We have an introduction. We have a body and a conclusion. Um, a letter that is in a business form will generally start with an introduction that states the purpose of the letter. Um, it is gracious in the way that it presents information. And then um, it usually will follow the introduction with a paragraph discussing the connection that the writer is making with the reader. Um, then it has a request, it has the proposal, and then it concludes by trying to get the audience to actually do something about the topic of the letter. So that it is following a pretty clear structure that is represented in professional letters all the time. Um, if you were to do a cover letter for a job, you would format it in a very similar way. You would have an introduction element that shares that you are applying for a certain position. You'll have a paragraph about yourself and your experiences. Then you'll have a paragraph about how your experiences and um, success could benefit the company that you want to work for. And then you would have a close and sign your name. It's a very similar type of structure that you would see in any business communication. Um, it also has professional language. Uh, we see some we-centered elements, um, talking about the mission statement of the company. We have uh, a clear understanding of what the expectations are. You notice that there's an actual dollar amount that is requested. So that it's not just him hauling around, we'd like you to please think about, maybe consider, I don't know, maybe that would be really cool. But it's actually saying, we would like the company to donate $10,000 to the program. Okay, so that's a very specific detail. And it is, it is blunt, but it's also gracious. So it's important to approach your audience in an, a gracious way that is centered on their uh, beneficial connection to your topic. Now, I will say that this letter probably could spend more time discussing the mission statement of the ABC company and how that connects to the goals of the of the XYZ program. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but we can definitely see that there is a structure here. There's a format that we could look at and model after when we're trying to create our own proposals. Because so the modeling part would definitely be the structure, 
And I would definitely want to see a description of your program. Like, what are you planning to do? What is your idea for change? We want very specific details, things that the company could say, okay, I can do that. So we're not going to write philosophical letters to this business. Um, we'd like you to think about agreeing with us on this topic. No, we want to actually have a plan of action, something that the company you write to will need to do, whether it's donating like this letter or um, doing some sort of action and creating a new committee, um, participating in a survey, whatever you decide to do, you want the reader to actually do something after reading your proposal and of course and it, and it ends with graciousness respect and it ends with an actual appeal to something happening after the end of the letter so this is just something to think about as you're moving toward the essay uh, to assignment but I want you to pay attention to the professional language the way in which the information is presented a you centered idea and also tone and style that is direct to the point and productive so professional writing just as a review is you centered it is direct and to the point it clearly states objectives what is the point of the writing and what do you want to get done um, it re relates directly to the reader so how can this reader do something or move forward with the ideas that you're presenting it should include a purpose that could benefit both parties in some way. So the overall communication should not only be beneficial to the writer, but also to the reader. It can include first person perspective, but don't become too self important. And I think that's an important point to, to look at in professional writing. You don't want to be so eye focused that you sound uh, self aggrandizing. So we, we don't want to do that. All right, so for this week, remember to read page 37 to 52 in a sequence for academic writing. Respond to the week four discussion board questions, which I think will be helpful in understanding how to connect to a specific business audience because we're going to look at scholastic books and how they could um, come on board with an idea that I present in the discussion board, so that should be fun. We will have a quiz this week, so keep an eye out for that. And just keep in mind the essay 2 assignment, start developing your ideas for that as well. Um, so here is my Works Cited page. If you do have any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me. As always, you can uh, send me an email, shoot me a text, give me a call. But um, thank you so much for your time, and I hope you have a great week. All right, talk to you later.